Hey guys and welcome. Well, I have to say I'm pretty happy with my Ender 3 version 2, but not everything is working perfectly. So in this video, we're going to do something about that. So stick around. While investigating retraction settings on Bowden versus Direct Drive, I was wondering why there's such a big difference. It doesn't seem to make much sense mathematically. Direct Drive uses around 1mm retraction with good results. My Bowden uses about 5mm. We've got friction within the long tube. Now, this should be pretty minimal depending on what you're printing um, and maybe the quality of the tube as well. Uh, this one's somewhat unknown and kind of hard to measure and test for. So now we have the size of the filament, 1.75 millimeters and some tolerance there versus the inside diameter of the tube itself. Um, now based on a 14 inch tube, there is a maximum possibility of losing about 0.6 millimeters uh, when retracting versus extruding. And now uh, to the big one, adapters and fittings. These seem to have some movement in them, and when looking inside, it isn't really that hard to understand why. So let's get right to the point. The original fitting attaching the Bowden tube to the Bowden gear drive assembly allows way too much movement. Um, there's too much slop. Over time, that tube is being eaten away by the spring steel tines on the inside, and it's starting to allow movement of that um, tube in and out. So if you were to leave that long enough, the tube end will completely wear away and lose the connection with the fitting. This is extremely difficult to see. However, if you're able to mark the tube and watch it, you'll understand. PTFE, AKA Teflon, is the same material you'd find on your nonstick frying pan. It's extremely slippery and very heat resistant. Trying to glue or tape it though, in place just does not work. Now before we go and buy something, I want to address the length of the tubing. The math suggests that a longer tube won't necessarily add much tolerance on our retraction. And a longer tube also means less movement at the fitting to help preserve a good connection. I decided to purchase these parts knowing full well that the tube tolerances could be a problem, uh, but the price was right and the ratings seemed to be real. Um, so it's time to remove the old tube and fittings. Remove the two dome head machine screws carefully so you don't lose them and take the fan shroud off. This is straightforward as long as you take the fittings off. And this is because PTFE or Teflon tube expands with high heat and the metal tines do dig in and deform the tube as well. So you can slide the hot end fitting off only in one direction after you take the fitting out. Before we go and reassemble everything, I'm gonna go one step further and try to get a superior connection to the gear drive fitting by expanding the PTFE tubing on just that end. I've marked the end with uh, the teeth on the fitting itself for reference and I'll use a lighter to heat the end until it changes color. The blue turns a bit darker, if you have white tubing it will turn clear. So PTFE will melt and it will catch fire so please be careful while you're doing this. With the end expanded slightly we need to align it while it hardens and we'll make a new clean cut on the end as well. I'm shooting for the teeth to engage on the transition between the two sizes in order to help it stay in place. All we need to do now is attach the new fittings, run the tubing through the fitting right into the hot end, making sure that it bottoms out completely. The gear drive fitting does not allow the tube to pass through and we'll make sure that we bottom that one out as well. Now I will say that this tubing is a little snug. The inside of the tube measures at 1.84, 1.85 millimeters. The Capricorn tubing measures around 1.9 and most of the others seem to measure at around 2. The smaller diameter means a little bit more pressure required to push the filament through and that could lead to problems over time. From previous testing with this printer I know that anything less than 5mm retraction gives a poor result. So let's throw some samples together to see if there's been an improvement and which is the best number to use for retraction now that we've changed the fittings and the tubing. These samples are printed with the fan set to only 10%. That's because I like my prints to have good layer adhesion. I've also been printing with PETG recently and it can leave little fine strands, but otherwise seems to be a really good 3D printing material. The first sample uses a zero retraction and that's just for comparison. Now the one millimeter, you can see that there is an improvement. The two millimeter, again, an improvement, but not quite there yet and three millimeter looks really good, almost perfect. All right, 
I believe the fitting problem has been corrected and the Bowden tube is about 18 inches long now. It's time to reduce the retraction distance from 5 millimeters to 2.5 millimeters. I should mention that because I print mainly structural parts, I use a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And because of that, the seam visibility will be a little bit higher uh, in the same way that you would have sharp corners appear slightly more rounded with a larger nozzle size. Now, after all those changes, I wanted to have another look at the fitting to check for movement. This is after about 40 hours of prints. And you can see there is a very small amount, maybe uh, 0.25 millimeters and any movement is bad. So I do think that this fitting can be improved again, but that will have to be left for another time. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video. Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.